Well, hello and welcome to episode 552 of Garden City Community Chat. It's Thursday, November 18th, 2021. Hey, we're happy that you could uh, be with us tonight. I am your host, Kerry, and also joining me tonight, Garden City's most accurate weatherman in the business, Mr. Doppler, Tom Iwinski. Tom, how you doing? Doing well, but I got to get the uh, head and shoulders with the sky out there. I think it has a little dandruff right now. <laughs> yeah, it's flaky out there. Yeah, and I don't mean dandruff either. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get to you in a little bit. Also, uh, Mike was supposed to be here, but uh, he's MIA, so uh, I don't know what's going on there. But uh, hopefully he'll be joining us here shortly. We'll see what happens. Well, tonight we're happy to have welcome back Melissa Hunt Sampy from uh, fresh off her recent election to the Westland City Council. She will be here to share with her constituents what challenges lie ahead for Westland and how she plans on approaching them. Also, the future of Westland and any ideas she might have and much more. So uh, we hope that you'll join us uh, when we um, get to know a little bit more about Melissa. But first up will be Tom uh, with the latest weather update and then We'll get Mike in here if he's here. If not, I will give the uh, community events and announcements for you. So grab your favorite beverage or snack and join us for the next hour or so. Remember, if you have any questions or comments and you're watching us live on Facebook, go ahead and type them in the comments section. You can also text your questions to 734-788-9319, and we'll do our best to get those answered for you. I just want to take a minute to say thank you to all of our listeners and supporters of the show who tune in every Thursday night, not only from our hometown of Garden City, but several of our surrounding communities as well. We really appreciate your support and we'll continue to promote our community and yours. And please continue to watch, share, and listen. I also have a program note for you. We will be off next week enjoying Thanksgiving with our family eating too much as always, and maybe watching a Lions victory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I knew that would get a, get a, uh, something out of you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yep. <laughs> so mark your calendars. Uh, if you would like uh, to binge watch a few of our shows, you may have missed, uh, just go to our YouTube channel and search for GC community chat and they'll be right there listed for you all in order. So that way you can get caught up. Also, don't forget if your community or organization has any events or announcements or cancellations that you uh, would like to get out to our listeners, they should uh, email the details to us at gccommunitychat at gmail.com or message us on Facebook at facebook.com slash gcchat and we'll get uh, that information out for you. All right, let's get Tom in here now, uh, and then we'll spend some time chatting with Westland Councilwoman-elect Melissa hunt Sampy. So stand by for Tom in the weather. Okay, let's do a check on weather with Doppler Tom. Let's see what he has in store for the rest of this week and the weekend coming up. Tom, take it away. Well, yeah, it's a little flaky out there, my friend. Oh, yeah. Uh, winter's making its presence again uh, tonight. Yep. After after the first accumulating snow of the season this past Sunday, we got about 0.8 inches. And a lot of that, obviously, was wet snow. It didn't last very long. It was on the grass. It wasn't really on the road. And uh, it snowed pretty much throughout the day, which is what I was thinking. So yep. uh, we, were, we made it out pretty good. Uh, all that snow, obviously, has melted. And tonight we... Uh, uh, started to see more bands of on and off snow moving through. And uh, this snow is not very crazy. It's just some snow flurries to light rain moving on and off. And uh, it's not going to really accumulate too much. Uh, probably mm -hmm. not even really a dusting because uh, the winds will kind of stay going as well. So it kind of pushes that snow around and doesn't really have time for a lot of that to really kind of accumulate on the ground uh, much so it'll be kind of on and off blowing snow for the next few hours and it will really begin to wind down after midnight and during the overnight hours so this isn't going to continue throughout the overnight hours this will actually start to end over the next few hours after midnight and uh we'll see the uh actually the skies to really uh begin to break up and the clouds to decrease during the overnight hours as well so 
it's overall going to be a colder night with the skies clearing into the uh, uh, probably into the upper 20s. So a cold night out there. And then as we get mm. into uh, Friday, uh, we're going to see temperatures kind of the same as they were today. We're going to see temperatures in the 40s for overnight uh, for uh, daytime highs. And uh, overall, we're going to see the sun in the morning and then the clouds will build up throughout the day tomorrow. So more sun in the morning and then clouds for the uh, end of the day. And uh, overall, I do think the majority of the day and into the uh, Saturday will be dry. So if you have any uh, outdoor plans, I would definitely move them all into Saturday uh, more than on Sunday because on, on Sunday our next system moves in. So uh, as we get into the weekend, uh, overall it's going to be a cloudy weekend on Saturday uh, with temperatures again probably into the low 40s. So uh, it'll be dry on that uh, front. And then our next system moves in on uh, Sunday into uh, Monday. So uh, on Sunday, we'll see uh, rain begin to move in. Uh, probably uh, early in the day, uh, the, the rain will be moving through. It won't be uh, kind of an all-day rain. It will be more early in the day than anything. And then uh, it'll kind of dry out during the end of the day. But overall, temperatures will can stay We'll stay consistent in the 40s so overall a chillier weekend uh don't really see any problems with wintry weather i don't really see any uh that over the weekend but we probably will begin to move get more into that as the system moves out and we'll bring some colder air and on monday we'll see temperatures into the 30s on monday and as that uh, system begins to depart we'll probably see some more on and off snow moving through uh mm. probably very similar to what we've been dealing with this evening so <laughs> probably not a lot of accumulating uh, snow, but more of a nuisance and uh, in the air kind of a thing. So uh, as that system moves in, it will bring on colder air. So the rain will switch over to some bands of snow and uh, then it will start to dry out on a uh, Monday night. So uh, as we get into next week after Monday uh, into Tuesday, we'll stay chillier into the early portion of the week. We'll see temperatures in the thirties on Monday and then to Tuesday. And then it will try to warm up just a little bit on uh, Wednesday and Thursday onto uh, temperatures in the 40s, but it will stay dry. The only precip I really see is going to be on Monday. So if you have any plans to uh, be traveling uh, after Monday, it's, you should be good. It's just going to be on the chillier side with more clouds than sun over the uh, majority of the week. So I uh, don't really see a whole lot of uh, sunshine mm -hmm. for extended periods of time. And uh, as we get into the end of the month, it's crazy to even think about the end of December. I know. Uh, we're going to see uh, kind of a quieter period after the system moving through this weekend uh, with temperatures in the 30s and 40s for highs and lows. So uh, mm. it's going to start to <laughs> – I really see the pattern uh, really, uh, I dare I say, clouding up, <laughs> which is very typical for Michigan as we get into uh, December. It really kind of clouds up and cold and cools down, and it kind of stays like that for three months. Right, Carrie? <laughs> and yeah. We have to, so I really see that uh, – starting to really uh, become into fruition as we get into the end of the month and into December. Uh, and I don't really see much opportunities after uh, tonight and into Monday for accumulating snow. So uh, okay. some good news. I mean, yeah. people, people aren't ready for it yet. Uh, so I, that's what I get. Uh, that's what you get for me. And uh, some good news. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I'm staying uh, fairly, fairly quiet across the U S there really isn't too much going on. Uh, there's, a lot of snow across the Great Lakes, which is just lake effect snow into the inner portions and the lake belts. Uh, the country is overall staying pretty cold as well uh, into the eastern U.S. And uh, the west is uh, staying pretty pretty quiet as well. There really isn't too much going on into the West, at least weather-wise. So, mm -hmm. uh, some good news uh, yeah. if you have any travel. But, if you want to keep tuned to all my local weather information, just go to my website, DopplerTomsWeather.com, and it will keep you updated and you can see the snow moving in and out and uh, the breakdown of the forecast. Alright. Sounds good, my friend. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think a little bit of snow for Christmas Eve and then go away after that. <laughs> right. that's, that's the request I get every year. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's say hi to a few people in there that are watching us. We got uh, William Moorhands in there. How you doing tonight, Paul? Uh, Mrs. Chats in there. Uh, Councilwoman Pro Tem Kelly Kerwin is in there. Debbie Hunt, Mark Mukovitz, Patty Fix, uh, Fire Chief Garden City Fire Chief Harmon. Kathy Harmon's in there. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Hope you're feeling better. Joe Maria is watching, Sherry Lynn Bauer. Also, our number one fan, Kathy Ward, is in there. How are you, Kathy? Thanks for joining us. 
So good to see everybody out there tonight. All right, let's uh, get to our guests. Fresh off her recent election, please welcome Westland Councilwoman-elect Melissa Sampy. Hi. You're muted. <laughs> oh, I was trying to mute to make sure that there's no background noise. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate so, that. Any surprises in the election? Um, I think it's depending on who you ask, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't. I, I, I think that um, everyone worked really hard. Um, I think it was a, a pretty clean campaign for the most part. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that maybe I might have surprised people coming in with the amount of votes I came in. But that's, surprises are always a good thing. Right, right. So first, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? You were on um, not that long ago when you were campaigning. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I actually am a newcomer to politics. Mm -hmm. So from a political background, I came in with someone that didn't hold office prior to coming into this election. Mm -hmm. um, I have a business called True mm -hmm. Champions. Uh, True Champions helps parents and um, their athlete from across the country obtain scholarships mm -hmm. to get into college um, athletically. So that has been a passion of mine is, is helping, you know, higher education and, and facilitating and saving parents money. So I'm, I'm sure that, you know, viewers that are listening, if you have an athlete, I can I can talk with you offline. Um, so I have that. So I have a business background, communication background. I've I've been in communication, sales, marketing for 15 years, and um, I'm also a consultant. So I I do healthcare consulting from a communication perspective. So I work with Henry Ford Health System and um, Health Alliance Plan HAP, and I work on mm. like their website and um, kind of digital marketing to um, to kind of market their services. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I can tell you're pretty good on the microphone. That's for oh, sure. Oh, thank you. You know, <laughs> we talked about this, but I, I was in radio for, for a small period of time. I started right, my right. career in radio. Yeah. 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 So you do a lot of zoom meetings or, uh, do you work from home or I do? Yeah. So okay. a lot of zoom meetings. <laughs> um, you know, I think the world has transitioned into, an online platform, right? I mean, everyone's on their computer. I think and, so. I yeah, think so. It's really yeah. shifted. I think the business world is, has shifted um, the way that we do business and more people are now online. Um, and especially with our fourth wave of, of the COVID um, vaccine, I think people are, are starting to send, if they are in person, they're starting to kind of shift their, um, their work policies to have people work from home. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, that leaves a lot of empty office buildings, you know? It does. Yeah. It really yeah. does. I mean, oof. Yes. It's, uh, it's something else. So, look, let's get to the election. Um, sure. You, there was, they voted for the top four, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so, eight, I think there was eight candidates. Uh, yep. So we had a primary just to bring people up to speed. So we had a yeah. primary, which um, consisted of 13 people. Um, the primary took place right. in August. After the August primary, it went down from 13 to eight. Um, and eight people ran for technically four seats. Right. There were three incumbents that were running for their seat again. And then there was one true open seat that was vacated by um, another candidate that ran for mayor against William um, Mayor Wild. Right. That was Tasha Green. That was Tasha Green. Yes, correct. Right, right. So, okay. So out of the the top four, three would be four-year terms, and the yes. fourth one was two-year, right? That is correct. Yep. So what, there was, you, yep. Go ahead. Yep. So there was um, the three incumbents that received the four-year term, mm -hmm. and um, I received a two-year term as a, right. as a newcomer. But I'll tell you, you did pretty darn good because you were only like 93 votes away from that four-year term, really. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was, I think it was surprising for some people, um, just to have a newcomer come in, um, myself in the third spot was like you said, within, you know, 90 something votes. Mm -hmm. And then, um, the second spot, which also was a four-year term, we were within about 150. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we, we worked super hard. We, we, uh, were out daily, me and my team. Um, and I think it just came down to a lot of hard work and, um, really being focused on the end goal, which was, you know, to be elected. And I, you know, I wasn't sure where I was going to come in, but after the, um, the election on election night, we found out that I was second in um like on a, on election day per se so at the mm-hmm. polls i came in second but you know how that goes they factor in um absentee ballots and yeah that that's that awesome was, yeah yeah and that kind of brought me down but but yeah it was it was very it was a prideful moment uh, very emotional you work for six months uh, a lot of sacrifice and time yeah. and you know kind of going away from your priorities of your everyday life and Mm-hmm. And you work hard to, like I said, the end goal. And it, it's harder too for like a newcomer because people don't know you. So right. you had to get your name out there for sure. You knocked yes. down a lot of doors, I, I assume. A lot of doors. Yes. <laughs> a lot of doors. And I don't see him in there tonight. Oh, yes, he is in there. He just got in there. Uh, one of your strongest advocates and supporters was Councilman Mike Landau. Yes. And, yes. Um, he just said good evening. I'm so proud of Melissa. She worked extremely hard and really connected with voters. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you really helped, Mike, that's for sure. He did. He knows us. He, you know, he's a phenomenal councilman. Um, he's very, very, very well connected with voters as too. So he does not need to discount himself. Um, we had a great time. He was a great resource for me, a huge advocate, and I'm forever grateful for kind of his advice and support um, throughout the journey. So he's, again, amazing person, amazing councilman, and he really is the heart of Westland. He puts the voters, or the voters, the residents as number one. Um, he he every, really does. He really he does. does. He does he a lot. So hard. He really gives back a lot to the community, too. He does. He does. Uh, Garden City Mayor Randy Walker's in there says hello as well. Hi. <laughs> Hopefully, Randy, you and I can uh, meet. I haven't met Randy yet. Oh, really? No. Uh, okay. Yeah. He's a good guy. You'll like him. Uh, let's see. Sherry Lynn Bauer is watching. How are you? Thank you. That's awesome. So you're in for two years. I am. Now, yes. So then you have to, well, it's a, it's two years. It's enough to get your feet wet. Yes. Not quite enough to really dig in yet. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it gets you exposure to, um, yeah. Like you said, it gets your feet wet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some people are focused on on kind of building up and being involved as best as possible. I think the first, especially a couple of months, I'm going to do a lot of listening and learning. Yes. Um, I mean, I think it's important to take everything in, um, everything that I've learned from the voters, you know, the six months of knocking on doors and mm-hmm. getting feedback and such. You know, I have everything written down and, you know, I'm really hoping that I can share that that insight coming fresh off the campaign trail um, with our current council members and Mm -hmm. really share what I learned and, you know, see if we can incorporate their feedback into what we move forward in the future. But again, I mean, the first two, I would say first couple of months is a lot of listening um, and then learning. And then from there it's, it's diving in. But I think as a council person, I've heard from so many people that you really are a cheerleader for the city. So as many events that I can be at, um, you know, as active as I can be, I, I, I want to, you know, I want to be, I think being a, a good public servant is being um, active and serving your, your residents. Well, I think that's a, a good sign of a true politician when you <laughs> listen yes. and take notes, right? Yes, absolutely. It's really very important. Absolutely. And be transparent, of course. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think just establishing the trust with um, the voters that, you know, I, I had support from and those maybe that I didn't have support from, maybe getting them to to trust me and, and sure. gain their trust too. Right. Let's hope they come around, right? Yeah. Debbie Hunt says, so proud of Melissa. Ah, oh, that's my mom. Okay. Thank you. And Mike uh, says, and then it's budget sessions. Yes. <laughs> I, I yeah, sat in on, on one of those, Carrie. Um, the, bu- the budget sessions are open to... Yeah, yeah, to to the public. So I sat in on last year's budget session, and it's a lot of work, a lot of preparation. Um, you know, from- it's, 
it's kind of a little bit intimidating because you're dealing with a lot of money there, aren't you? You are, yeah. There's a very large budget yeah. Westland has to control and balance, and that's your primary function as a, um, a council person to to really look at the budget and make sure that we have a balanced budget moving forward. And I know that um, you know our, our mayor, Mayor William Wild, and our council people, they pride themselves on having a very, um, tran like you said, transparent but balanced mm -hmm. budget every year. Yeah. And we don't want to slight the mayor. He won very big. He won very he did. big election. He so did. I want to congratulate Super, him as well. Super proud of him. Um, I actually just had lunch with him today. And yeah. um, just to kind of get to know you, um, he's a fantastic resource for as a new council person, but also for the city. We're super lucky to have him. And he's he's really um, you know, a champion for everything Westland. Yeah, yeah. And then we want to mention the other three council that won. They were all incumbents, right? James Hart, mm -hmm. Peter Hersberg, and then Jim Godbout, correct? Yes. Yep. So it was three. I always joke and said the three guys and me <laughs> that, that won this time around. Right, right. Uh, let's see. Nothing in there. Okay. So uh, let's move on. Uh, what do you feel the challenges are ahead uh, for Westland going forward into the new year? So I, I, we actually have, I wouldn't say it is a challenge. I would say it's more of an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so many cities are getting um, dollars from the government, you know, right. American yeah, recovery um, dollars. So I think it comes down to looking at what the plan is for, for Westland and, and really being strategic on how we can, you know, use those dollars in the best way. Sure. Um, so, you know, whether it's be our fire, um, our police, um, our parks, our infrastructure, whatever it may be. So I know there's been a lot of um, a lot of research done, and that's going to be kind of an opportunity for us as council people to set Westland up for its future and mm -hmm. make some very impactful changes. It's really going to change a lot of things with the dollars that are coming to make um, you know Westland you know different you know from what it is now. So. Right. So, yeah, speaking of the future, so what are the ideas for the future? What are your ideas? Uh, what, what would you like to see done with some of that money, for instance? So I'm a, a very huge advocate. I've, I've told many different people this um, for a new rec center. Um, I, I'm wholly supportive of this. I think it brings community together. Um, I think it gives opportunity for our youth and our senior populations to to come together and give them recreational um, opportunities. So that's something that is still in an investigation stage right now. There um, is no real rec center, is there, in Gar uh, Westland? No. So there was many years ago, if you'll remember, the Bailey Center. Oh, right. Bailey, yeah. Yeah. But it's since been, um, you know, it's since been torn down. So mm -hmm. there really is that gap from what yeah. I see. So as I think as Westland is, it'd be nice to have that. It would be, it'd be very nice. But, you know, people say, well, do we have a pool? Do we have this? What about this? But mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of opportunity for that. I think that there's a lot of opportunity for improving our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I've heard many times over from our residents. Uh, that was probably the number one thing at doors is, you know, we need to bring new businesses in, we need to improve our current infrastructure. Um, you know, we need to improve our roads, this and that. So that's definitely something that we hope to, um, to do. And then, you know, there is a lot of talk about what a downtown Westland would look like. And, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of conversations on what's going to happen in the future. And, you know, the downtown Westland, what does it look like? What could it be? But I think the goal is to bring in new businesses and that really helps Westland with growth. It helps it with um, getting new people to come to the city. And what, what does that look like for Westland in the future? We're not hundred percent sure because I think there's a lot of talks, but there is a lot of opportunity with the dollars that we might be able to use that for, um, for development purposes. Sure. Sure. What is considered the downtown in Westland? There really isn't a downtown, is there? No, you know, that's a, that's a good question. So some people may say it would be, um, you know, Warren Road kind of down by the new city hall. Okay. So like yeah. Warren and maybe like, Central uh, city. yeah, Central City area. Mm -hmm. But at the same point, too, it could be Ford Road in some people's minds. So right. I think there's not a true downtown development per se. We do have a um, downtown development authority, but 
there's okay. I think that there's a lot of conversation on on future build out of what it could be. Right, right. Yeah, because Garden City's downtown is considered Middle Belt and, and Ford Road. Yes. Basically, so. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, the size of Westland, a city that size, there's no actual downtown. That's kind of different. Not. Yeah, there's not. And it's I think it's the way that it's set up. Um, it's the way that it's structured. But yeah. I think it's exciting that when you do have funds like this, it's really a once in a lifetime opportunity to make some sure. impactful changes. And that's what I said all throughout the campaign is like, we do have an opportunity to make impactful changes. So all of us, you need to come together. I think it's going to come down to a lot of residents sharing their input too. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a current council member, council, Councilman McDermott, who's kind of done a survey um, and kind of asked for feedback. There's going to be other, I'm, I'm assuming, focus groups as well. But it's really looking at what's going to set us up for the future for Westland. And then from there, kind of putting a plan in place and recommendations. But I don't think anyone's going to jump into it very quickly because, again, it is uh, a large sum of money that we want to make sure that we're using in the most um, appropriate manner. Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> I imagine Steve Hunt, that's another relation. <laughs> that's my dad. Yeah. Melissa, Melissa will be good for Westland. Proud of you. <laughs> oh, that was really nice. Yeah. That's awesome. I have a question from uh, actually Mrs. Chat. She said, kind of lost track, but does the city of Westland still own Hawthorne Valley? And if so, any future plans been discussed yet on that? Very, very good question. So there has not been any future plans discussed, okay. to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that that is not a city property. Um, I think it's owned by the county now. I know that it was up for sale. Right. So I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen with that, but that is a really good question because folks did ask about that too. Yeah, yeah. And we they, loved it when it was a golf course. We, yeah. we always golf there, but uh, yeah, and we were very, very sad to see it close. Westland uh, only has one other. Okay, Mike just said the city does own it. Thank yep, you. Yep. See, I don't know everything yet. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. Yes. Any plans, Mike, that you know of or no? We didn't know. Maybe he can answer that. Yeah, to my knowledge, I don't think that there's anything fully planned out, but he may comment in and share. Yeah, so she must have been reading my mind, my wife, because that's exactly the question I was going to ask. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. I, I, I could have got you the answer, too. I was going to follow up on it. We'll be married 50 years in January, so, you know, that's what happens when you're married. That mind long. readers. <laughs> mind yes. Mind readers. You finish each other's sentences yet? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> hey, Mark Mukovitz uh, wants to know Westland Mall ideas. I guess good. that's... Yeah, of... good question, Mark. So currently, um, it's owned by a private company. Um, so I think that's a question on a lot of people's minds. It's definitely one on the top of my mind, too. Right. So right now it's it's owned by a company. So we can't come in and we can't push people out just like we can't people, you know, come in and push people out of people's houses. Sure. So ideally, there would be a goal or a thought. And there's been talk to really make that the downtown Westland area, mm -hmm. um, which would be a mix of, of shops and dine. If you guys ever go down to downtown Plymouth, it's really uh, oh, yeah. community focused. I, I think that they've talked or they've discussed ideas about kind of having it similar and mm. then some high rise to nice wow. condos on top, which would be absolutely gorgeous. So that's been one of the talks. Um, I know that they've talked through plans, but unfortunately it's owned by a private company. So until that company decides that they are going to kind of walk away from that or sell it mm -hmm. to a developer, our hands are tied. Okay. So I, I think in all, in all hope though, it would be great if we could do that. Oh, I'm not saying, awesome. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's not going to ever happen, but I think it comes down to that. And hopefully, you know, they see that we are community focused and our administration is community focused that if that does happen in the future, that there are some ideas or some things that we could move very quickly into construction. Well, I love downtown Plymouth, and it's it's yeah, such too. a walkable city as well. And it I, is. You know, that's always something that's bothered me about Garden City and Westland that they're not walkable cities. When you have Ford Road going right through the center of it, you know. 
and they're yeah. going 40, 50, 55 miles an hour. Who's going to, you know, see what we have to offer. Yes. I don't know how we would go about getting the speed limit to, you know, drop going through those cities, but might be something to look into. And I think the, the struggle too, Carrie, is like Westland is not a true destination city. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes us as, you know, administration, um, and I guess now I'm part of it, is to kind of see how we can transform that in the future. Right. You um, want to make it a destination, just like Garden City. We'd love to be a destination. You know, we need, you know, we just don't have the land. You know, that's a that's a problem, yeah. too. Yeah, but I think ideally it would be great if we could do that, Mark, and, you know, hopefully mm -hmm. kind of stay on touch on my um, on my social media so you can look up Melissa, Councilwoman Melissa Sampi, it should come up. But, you know, I think my goal in all of this too, and you kind of asked it earlier, is to just be very transparent. And with my communication background, I just hope that I can be a great communicator for our residents and sure. share as much knowledge as I have and as, as frequently as possible. So I hope to do Facebook Lives and some other things that really gets our, our voters and residents and everyone that lives in the city of Westland interactive too. Exactly. So they can feel like they're a part of a community. Yeah. Get, get their input, you know, and, and get them more involved for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike says, as far as um, Hawthorne, nothing currently there. Yeah. I, I figured that was the case. He also um, says we need to add to our daytime numbers. We do. And to kind of, so what that means is that, Daytime numbers is the people that are in our city on a daytime basis. So you'll mm -hmm. notice like the mall right now is is pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's not a lot going on, even just our businesses. There's not a lot of people, like I said, about having it a destination. A lot of people don't stay here. Mm -hmm. They may live here, but they go elsewhere, whether it be work or you right. know to, to dine or shop or whatnot. So adding to our daytime numbers is allowing us to have businesses and developments that keep people here. So mm -hmm. keep people working here, keep people staying here during the day. So they're just not always going outside the city. Right, right. And then of course, with COVID, you know, that really hampered and hurt a lot of shoppers, I would imagine too. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think all the, hi, Tina. Mm -hmm. um, I think malls in general, mm -hmm. yes. they kind of struggle. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, but I think Westland Mall has been has been something that's been struggling for a while now. Oh. But uh, I think there's some good ideas if we can, you know, if things happen in the future that we can do some development. I think that we have some good plans in place. Right. Our good friend Vic Barra says this lady is a doer. She has already shown me Vic the plumber. <laughs> Thank you, Vic. He's Vic's so an awesome sweet. Guy. We like we like Vic around here. Vic's amazing and Vic knows us. So we um we have a great event coming up. You know, Vic is is the spearhead and I always say like the leader of the pack. Um so the veterans um distribution is this weekend. So Vic's yes. been working very, very hard. He does um, a lot for the veterans. He does. And you know, we love the veterans too. So Vic and you know his team and Councilwoman Rakowski has been shopping and I've been helping her along with Councilman Lando and Councilman um, or he's the Council President Jim Hart mm -hmm. um, and Andrea's husband Eric. So we've been helping and Vic's been so patient. He's been amazing and it's really going to be. Oh, he said news on Hawthorne coming soon. Vic, yes. tell me yes. a secret. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Breaking news, Vic. You heard it here first. Come on. Vic knows all the secrets. <laughs> hey, he you said, can break it here. Break it here live. You can break it. Tell chat. us. <laughs> um, but no, he's 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 amazing. So he the city's lucky to have him as a facilities facilities director. Yep. Um, he's a doer too and a worker. That's for sure. He is. Yeah. We. I think our whole administration is is very talented. Um, all the directors that I've met thus far. Everybody within leadership in the city has been amazing. He said, not, not on, on TV. TV. <laughs> that's a, that's going to be something that uh, we'll talk offline, right? <laughs> we'll come back with a breaking news alert. Okay. Yeah. You um, let me know, all right? I will. But yeah, I mean, I think the city of Westland is a great team. Um, so again, it's kind of preparing for our future, you mm -hmm. know, with, with the vision of many different people and led by Mayor William Wild. And I think great things to come in Westland. I'm really happy to be a part of it. And I think it's going to be a, a really great two years and hopefully that's not going to be the end of it. 
Yeah. Kathy Ward and a damn good, nice guy. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes. <laughs> Very generous, too. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Before you go, I just wanted to ask you what would be, I know you only have two years, but what would be your number one, uh, oh, geez, on your wish list that you would like to see done in Westland hmm. about your councilwoman? I, I know think it's a tough question, but. I would love to see the rec center as a sports mom. I would love it. I, I think it would be amazing if we could get it done within two years. Um, so that would be my hope mm -hmm. um, and my wish, I guess. But I think that that would be a way for us, like I said before, to have that community, to have, you know, an opportunity for us with the absence of a Bailey Center to bring youth together um, and to bring seniors together. A lot of people, we love our Friendship Center in Westland, but I think a lot of people are looking for um, additional activities and so on and so forth. So sure. Vic does a great job with the bingo. I think I'm going to come up there one night too to play, but <laughs> you know, I, I think it kind of gives us a spot for us to, yeah. to have activities um, as well and bring in one center. Um, so there's more that happens that is just workout or wellness. I think there's an opportunity too for like mentorships. And I've always been a passionate person about like bringing like youth and seniors together. Oh, um, that'd be great. Yeah, I think that would be a really good opportunity. So I have a, I have a teenager that I always tell him, I said, if you can buddy up, like have a buddy program with seniors. Yeah, yeah. That would be great. Just mm -hmm. like we used to, back in the day, pen pals even, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, or, or, you know, just send them a greeting card or, or mm -hmm. anything. They appreciate that so much. They do. And you know what? I think it's it's a it's a good way for, for those to keep... Um, you know, the youth to keep the, the seniors per se. And I say that loosely young exactly. as well and feeling young, feeling connected. So yes. And it gives them a purpose. You it know? does. It Absolutely. Really does. Something to look forward to. Yep. 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 So that would be my hope, Carrie. I hope that we can get it done within two years. Again, there's a lot that needs to happen, but um, very, very, very hopeful that we can and hoping that I can be a part of it and share my insight from, kind of a business background, but also from a sports background too. I know Vic, I was bugging uh, Vic about things about this, the, uh, the non-existent rec center, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of great opportunity there. Yeah. And I think, I think there's others that are on board for that too, as well. There is. Yeah. yeah we have so good. far, so far, a lot of support, a lot of doors that I went to, uh, people were for it and supportive mm -hmm. of it. Oh, you want to comment? Uh, Mark wants you to comment on the new Westland Garden City Hospital. It looks great. It looks, Mark. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. I um, I may or may not have been there twice with my kids. Okay. Um, the service is amazing. We were in and out within thirty to forty-five minutes. Well, we love um, our hospital here. Yes, and I will great. tell you, I don't want to advertise it because it was so quick. Um, yeah. it was it was so fast. They um. They did a very nice job, and I, I think that it's a hidden gem that people haven't discovered yet, but once it gets discovered, I think it's going to be a, a really, really, really great health center in Westland. Well, yeah, knowing it's there, you know, is just yes. uh, really important for a lot of uh, residents, probably. That's for sure. Yeah, and anything like that, too, new business-wise, Carrie, I mean, it it takes a minute for um, yeah. for something like that to ramp up, just like any new business, so everyone that I've talked to that have actually been inside, they said it looks so nice and clean, mm -hmm. which is so true. Mm -hmm. And they said the service was great and they would come back again. Well, so I think good. the reviews so far that I've heard has, has been very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I know I said one last thing, but now I got one more last thing. <laughs> go ahead. Hey, I got nothing to do. Let's go. <laughs> Did you uh, happen to make it to the uh, light fest uh, lighting today or ceremony? I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't get to make it. Did you go? No, no, I didn't. I didn't make it either. Too busy was, working on the show. <laughs> yeah, no. And that was me too. So I, I had to stop. I heard the fireworks. <laughs> I did too. That's what I was going to tell you. I actually saw the fireworks. Uh -huh. um, I had to run to CVS to pick up something and I saw oh. the fireworks um, right from Warren Road. And I knew that was happening, but we try to schedule our time jumping right into uh, a busy schedule. I'm trying to, with oh, the help of, of Mayor Wild, he said, you have to be very 
strategic on your on your schedule as well too so yep. um i had something i had to do today and had a very busy day so i didn't get a chance to go but i actually look forward to driving through it because it's a nice oh, yeah. kickoff to your holiday season so for those that have not been i would absolutely recommend it yeah it is it's really nice uh, especially with a little bit of snow yes. it really looks nice I think yeah. last year, was it last year? There wasn't hardly any snow. I don't think there was snow at all. No, I don't think we had got sl snow until, yeah. oh my goodness, yeah. maybe like January. Yeah, it was kind of late. Yeah. It was definitely late. And I'm not Fire, sure. Fire oh. Chief Harmon says it was great. That's good to know. Did, oh, so, she, okay. So she went then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, and great. And Tina Wing says she's seen it on TV. So they must have had. Uh, Wonderful. A TV station there. Awesome. That is great. That's good news, too. It brings people to our city, even though it's a county program. Yep. It brings yep. people through our cities. And as they drive through, um, you know, we love that traffic as well. And I think our, it's still five bucks a car, I think. I believe it's five dollars a car. Yeah. Yep. Enter yep, off of Merriman Road. Evening. No, no, not at all. And I think you can turn on the, the Christmas station. They give you a, a station to turn on to. Right. So if you're in the mood for Christmas music early, you can start that. I don't know if, um, you know, if you like what I think it's 100.3. Yeah. I think they started. I think they turned on their Christmas music. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Well, they had it on like it was. I don't even think Halloween was over and they were playing it already. And that's they kind of sacrilegious early. to me. But. They start early. Yes, We're they real do. traditional here in this house. So it's everything is after Thanksgiving. Same, same. Yeah. yeah. After Thanksgiving, I'll start to get in the Christmas exactly. spirit. But exactly. uh, I like to kind of, same as you, take things one step at a time. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Well, look, hey, it's been great talking to you again. Once again, congratulations. Thank um, you. Anybody wants to get a hold of you, everything is right there. Your email, your website, your phone number. Did I read yes. somewhere, Melissa, where you um, had a form that people could fill out? Uh, yeah, so I have a contact form on my website, um, okay. ivotemelissa.com. Mm -hmm. So I have a form on there. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, they can fill out the form. So on my website, there's a tab that says contact um, any questions or feedback, um, they also can call me directly. They can text me. They can email me at citizensformelissa at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the process of onboarding right now. So working with the city to get my, my email set up and such. So I will have my, my city email on my website as well. But I mean, I think the quickest way to get a hold of me is you can always call or text that I think that's anyone that wants to get a hold of you right away, but they can fill out the form and they can go on my um, social media too. So just type in councilwoman Melissa Sampy or councilwoman elect. Hopefully soon I'll be changing that once we get um, sworn in <laughs> and right. uh, they can send me a message there. They can follow social media, like I said, and, and kind of interact with you, with me on a frequent basis. And you said you could be sworn in pretty much any time now, right? Yeah, yes, I can. So um, we're just we're just kind of waiting to get the onboarding process up, up and ready to go. But my first official day on the job will be on January third. Okay. And that's my first meeting, my first council meeting, and I will be sworn in. Um, like I said prior to, but we have a ceremony, and Councilman Lando is going to do. Um, the honors to, um, to, you know, in the ceremony. So I'm oh, very awesome. excited. That's great. That's great. We'll take yes. lots of pictures and post them. I will. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. I will post them on my page and I'll post them online as well. I got a couple of <laughs> things here. Boo on Christmas music before Thanksgiving. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. We totally agree. We can't, we can't do that, Vic. We can't do the, <laughs> the music. Steve Harmon says that uh, she went to the Westland Medical Center for the Monica Colono IV therapy. Oh Place yeah. Was great. Didn't make the light fest. Heard it though. Oh, okay. Oh, like great. That. Well, I'm glad that she had a, thank you, Kathy too. She said, thank you. And congratulations. I'm yeah. glad that she had a good experience. I did too. So I'm, I'm recommending it to everybody. And I yeah. hope that the reviews are, are still going to continue to be good because my experience was good and I, we want to keep it around. Exactly. Yeah, sure. it's, a, it's a wonderful asset, I believe, to Westland for sure. 
Absolutely, it is. Uh, with Melissa's help, we have 341 veterans signed up to receive turkeys this Saturday. That is awesome. Vic, you know what that means, what we're doing tomorrow, shopping. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've we've done the shopping. He said whole meals, whole meals actually. actually, yes. Yeah. Yes, we've we've done a lot of shopping um, thus far. So <laughs> very, very that. thankful. Vic's been, like I said, very instrumental with this. This is this has been a, a longstanding program. I'm just very happy that I can be a part of it this year. Yeah. It kind of fills my fills my passion and, and my my uh, servant kind of ideas that I like working through. So Actually, my myself and my wife Cheryl uh, had the uh, pleasure of working with Vic and uh, doing some uh, veteran programs as well uh, back in the day. And uh, he's a great guy to work with. Very, like I said, very giving. Yes, I think we're gonna like Vic said. So three hundred and forty-one, I believe he said. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. I, I'm is. I'm so 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 thankful we have that many people. Um, to be able to gift people this time of year and knowing people have um, COVID that affected their families oh, and just terrible. other challenges that they're going through. Um, what a blessing. And I have a lot of volunteers for you, Vic. So my son is bringing a bunch of his friends. They're high schoolers and they like giving back. One of them actually is celebrating a birthday and he's still volunteering. So um, we're going to have a lot of help. And I know that the city is going to be um, front and center. And I, I'm just really excited for Saturday. It's Again, it warms my heart because that's the passion. That's the reason why I got into um, politics or being a public servant is because mm -hmm. of this. It's if it is, it feels good to give back, and uh, yeah, that's why I I love doing this show as well. Having people like yourself on and mm -hmm. just getting to know you and getting the word out there. It's just it's just uh, something that keeps me going. Yeah, you do a great job too, Carrie. I love the show. <laughs> you know that I, I will come on anytime. Awesome. And be awesome. a part of it. I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you and uh, best of luck. And uh, thank you. Please keep me posted on anything happening. You got it. Uh, let's see. Make sure there's no other comments here. Uh, yeah, Vic says 8 a.m. <laughs> I'll be there, Vic. I'll be there at 8 a.m. <laughs> Distributions at 10 a.m. for veterans. Okay. We will be there at 8 a.m. starting the packing and getting things ready. <laughs> And you know, getting the getting the young kids, the young people involved like that for volunteering, mm -hmm. oh, it's beautiful, beautiful thing. That's been the base of my campaign, you know, which yep. I told you before is my um my team Sampy has been about 30 kids that have rotated in and out. Um most of them are all high schoolers actually, and it taught them about um public speaking. It talked it actually talked more or less or taught them more or less about being involved in their community. Um, standing for something that they believe in and the passion. So they've been amazing um, thus far throughout my journey. And I, I'm really happy that they're staying involved mm -hmm. and being a part of something kind of what I always say, bigger than themselves, yeah. you know, so they're yeah. kind of giving back to others. So, and it um, keeps them off of this, you know, <laughs> Yeah, most all of them are athletes, so they don't have a lot of time for this, oh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Any free time that they would have, you know, we're getting them up early on Saturday and, Right. Um, I think even for them, it makes an impact and these are things that they'll remember and hopefully yeah. take with them throughout their life and continue to give back. You know, you kind of start at, like I said, a young age and you continue on and it makes an impact and they remember it. Well, yeah, they, uh, they will appreciate it as well. And, and, you know, it's very true. It all starts at home. It yes. all starts at home with your kids. Absolutely. So and, um, teach them. My son has no no other choice. It's always <laughs> been like this in the Sampy household, always. So, I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I said, get on your coat. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look, uh, Melissa, like I said, uh, good luck. Keep us posted, and um, we'll see you again next time. All right? Sounds good. Thank you so much, Carrie, for having me on. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you to all the supporters and voters and residents and everyone that's been amazing throughout um, the campaign and also reaching out afterwards. And I just look forward to connecting with, with you. And again, Carrie, I look forward to being back on the show soon. All right. Anytime you take all care. Right. All right. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All, bye -bye. Right. all right. Melissa Sampy, councilwoman elect for Westland. Did a great job. Brian Sampy, very proud of you. Team Sampy. <laughs> 
Sorry, uh, I didn't get you there, Brian, at the end. All right. Let's see what we got here next. Um, oh, reminder, the next city council meeting will be held November 22nd at 7 p.m. in the council chambers located at 6000 Middle Belt Road. It's a good way to uh, get involved and voice your concerns that you might have as well. So hope to see you there. All right, we're going to uh, do a few announcements. Mike never did make it, so I hope he's all right. Never heard anything. So uh, let's see. Mrs. Chat says, happy Thanksgiving from our home to yours. Absolutely, dear. You got it. All right, let me put up a few of these. We will get these out right now. Da -da 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 -da. All right, here we go. We got Garden City Parks and Rec presents Tech Talk with Julie. 10.30 to 11.30, the first and third Monday of each month. Um, I believe uh, Julie will be taking off for the holidays. Um, I don't know exactly when, but you may want to uh, call uh, Garden City Parks and Rec and, and find out for sure when. We have uh, preschool playtime, fun activities at the Maplewood Community Center gym. Make new friends, Mondays, 9.30 to 11 a.m., $3 drop-in. Parents and kids ages 1 to 4, come imagine, play, and create. Call 734-793-1877 for more information. Get your game on. Learn to play soccer, ages 4 to 6, Tuesdays, 6 o'clock. Soccer Skills 101, ages 6 to 8, Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. Call 734-793-1882 to sign up. It's at the Maplewood Community Center. Uh, it's already started uh, through December 21st. It's $45 to get going. We have the USDA Commodities, third Wednesday of every month. Emergency Food Assistance Program, free to Garden City residents only, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And Focus Hope, Focus Hope, first Wednesday of every month. Food box program, free to Wayne County seniors only, 11.30 to 1.30, and that is at the Maplewood Community Center. For more information, 734-793-1857. Also, we have uh, Wednesday drop-in, kids dodgeball, ages 6 to 12, from 6 to 7.30 p.m. It's 5 bucks. Also, RC tracks, all ages. 7.30 to 9.30, $10, limited rentals available. I think that is either, I think that's probably at the Maplewood Center too. I'm not sure on that. The 17th annual Senior Thanksgiving Dinner will be held on Monday, November 22nd at the sports venue. They will be giving away a free turkey dinner to all seniors living in Garden City and neighboring areas. Donations need to be in before November 14th which has already passed. And uh, last I heard, Lori was all set. I think all she needed was some Cool Whip, and I believe she got all that. Um, let's see. So that will be November 22nd. I think last year she did uh, gave away 500 meals. She does a remarkable job. November Craft Night, Tuesday, November 23rd, 5.30 to 6.30. For five dollars, you can go and make your own craft at Maplewood Community Center, seven three four seven nine three one eight five zero to sign up, or visit the front desk of the Maplewood Center, and you can get all your information there. It's that time again for the Santa Land Parade. It's the sixtieth Santa Land Parade, Saturday, November twenty seventh at ten a.m. For more information, go to santalandparade.com. They also has a form there if you would like to be in the parade. So time's running out. You're going to want to get that taken care of right away. And then immediately following the Santa Land Parade, the DDA is sponsoring Saturday, November 27th. Come and visit and Santa and shop. Uh, open until 3 p.m. It's the northeast corner of Ford and Middle Belt Road. So that's immediately following the parade. You can come and visit Santa. And then on November 29th at 6 p.m., the community Christmas tree lighting will be held. And that's right on the uh, northeast corner uh, or north, I'm sorry, northwest corner uh, in the commons there. 
and dress warm is all I got to tell you because it gets very cold out there. It's pretty windy too. Uh, Mayor William Wild invites you to attend the 2021 State of the City Address Thursday, December 2nd. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. Reception and light refreshments at 6 p.m. Westland Mayor William R. Wild State of the City Address at 7 p.m. And that will be at the Westland City Hall, 36300 Warren Road. Maplewood Community Center is having a blood drive December uh, Friday, December 3rd, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It will be in the gym at 31735 Maplewood Street. Appointments preferred, walk-ins welcome as the schedule allows. Call 866-MI-BLOOD, 866-MI-BLOOD, or visit um, versiti.org slash MI to schedule. And let's see, helpful tip. Make sure you eat a healthy meal and drink plenty of water before donating. And there is a shortage, I guess, again. So they're looking for, for blood. The Straight Farmhouse is presenting Simply Dickens, December 3rd. Bring in the holiday season. Listening to old world Christmas carols and holiday skits. Join us at the historic Odd Fellows Hall. For this delightful concert, then we will travel to the Straight Farmhouse where the smells and tastes of Christmas time await. Stroll around the museum and look around at our newest exhibit called Santas. Over 100 Santas will be on display throughout the museum. Tickets are $15 per person available at Straight Farmhouse or online at sfh.ludus.com. Straight Farmhouse is located at 6221 Merriman Road. You can call Kim at 734-812-1559 for more information. The uh, Taste Fest in Westland at the Hellenic Cultural Center is sold out. That is sold out. So we wanted to get that out there. And let's see, that's about all I got there. I do have a reminder. Um... The last yard waste pickup will be December 15th. So if you haven't got your leaves cleaned up yet, you want to get them picked up before then, before the 15th. Also, the Garden City Gold Book with all the ordinances is available at City Hall. Uh, if you didn't get one in the mail, which everyone should have, uh, you can go to City Hall and pick one up. Uh, let's see. The fourth annual Garden City Santa Land Ride will be December 16th, 6.30 p.m. it starts. And uh, the Garden City Buzz has a map of the uh, of the ride in there, and I believe it's on the city website at gardencitymi.org. Also, letters to Santa uh, starting right after Thanksgiving. Uh, you can go to the City Hall drop box they have there inside. Ends December the 10th. For the third year, Santa will be accepting letters at Garden City Hall. If your child has a letter they want to send to Santa, drop it off into the Santa mailbox in City Hall after Thanksgiving, but before Friday, December 10th. And Santa will answer each and every one of them. And if you like to decorate your house, uh, tell the city by December 15th. This holiday season, Garden City will host its third annual Best Decorated House Competition by December 15th. You must email City Hall your street address with a picture of the lights. Please send your information to holidaylights at gardencitymi.org. Because we will recognize the best decorated houses, the homeowner of the house must be the one to send the information. And um, as you know, Dr. Tom, our weather guy, uh, won for his house, I believe it was last year. So he's ineligible this year, I think, for the next three years, maybe. I don't know what it is. But that's all I have for tonight. Um, if you want to uh, know more about the Straight Farmhouse, they have a lot more events going on. Go to straightfarmhouse.org. And uh, that's all I got. All right. You know, we're always looking for guests to be on the show, so... If you or someone you know might be interested, it's very easy. You can contact us through our website at gardencity or gccommunitychat.com. I'm sorry. 
send us your name, email address, and a brief message, and we'll contact you within 24 hours. Or you can message us on our Facebook page. Once again, that's uh, facebook.com slash gcchat. Doesn't matter what community you live in, we want to hear from you during this time. We'll do the show remotely and safely from the comfort of your home like we just did tonight with uh, Melissa. Maybe you own a business or belong to an organization. You'd like to share your information with us and the surrounding communities. If so, contact us today, and we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and with that said, let's see, what do we got here? Kathy Ward says, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Great show, Carrie. Thank you. Tina, thanks, and happy Thanksgiving to you. Yep, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Mrs. Chat, great show. We appreciate that. Appreciate all of you in there. Keep me going. You keep me going. And with that said, I think we're ready to call this a podcast, podcast, podcast. Special thanks to Melissa Hunt Sampy, Westland Councilwoman elect. It was a pleasure having her on tonight. You can contact Melissa at m.huntsampy, S A M P E Y, at gmail.com. Uh, let's see, I also have a phone number here you can use 734 637 2078. Or you can go to her website at ivotemelissa.com. All one word, ivotemelissa.com. She'll answer all your questions or, and concerns. So be sure to uh, contact Melissa. And um, also a big thank you to uh, my co-host, Dr. Tom Iwinski. And Mike, wherever you are, I uh, hope you're having a good night. Great job as always. And a big thank you to each and every one of you who uh, watch and listen every week. We really appreciate it. Remember, this show will be available right after we sign off tonight on Facebook. So catch it later at your convenience if you tuned in late by going to facebook.com slash gcchat. Also catch us on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for GC Community Chat. You'll find not only this show, but all of our past shows as well. And please subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. And as always, we continue to thank all of our health care workers, first responders, police and fire, everyone on the front lines who serve and protect us every day. We can't thank you enough. Be safe. And we want you to know that you and your families are in our thoughts and prayers every day. And uh, when you see any of these heroes, please let them know how much you appreciate them. Remember, the success of a community depends on the community. So please support your local businesses. Don't forget, we like community unity. Let's be united and support one another. And please don't hesitate, vaccinate. I don't know if you are aware of the numbers, but uh, Michigan is another hot spot. So we have to um, get those numbers down, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, like I said, let's get the numbers down. And um, let me see what else I got here. It's up to each and every one of us, that's for sure. All right. Um, we will be off next week. Remember, it's Thanksgiving. So um, we want you all to have a great Thanksgiving. Don't eat too much. <laughs> sure, right. We always eat too much. Uh, for all your weather information, head on over to doppertomsweather.com. He's got a great user website over there. Remember, we'll uh, be off next week, like I said, for Thanksgiving. We hope you and your family have a wonderful and safe holiday. And uh, we'll be right back here December 2nd with another great show for you. So until then, thanks for listening. Stay safe and have a great night. Take care, everybody. Thank you.